Keeping the head table will come to order. <laughs> Sorry, it's the last day. I got extra snarky. Um, at 10.06. Okay, welcome back. Um, I have to do my announcements and stuff first, but thank you. Uh, welcome back to our Monday session. A um, few brief announcements. For the very last time, I would like to introduce my staff in case there's anyone in the room who hasn't been to any of the previous sessions, and if so, dear God, why did you pick this one as your first? <laughs> <laughs> but just in case, uh, I am Jesse Lip, the presiding officer. Uh, I use they, them pronouns, and my form of address is mixed chairperson. Uh, we have Alex Axe, our timekeeper, who uses they, them pronouns. Kevin Stanley, my deputy, who uses he, him. Linda Denneroff, our secretary, who uses she, hers. Don Eastlake, our parliamentarian, uses he, him pronouns. Our sergeant at arms are Terry Neal, Joe Van Eckeren, and, and <clears throat> excuse me, Ann Davenport, who all use she, hers. Uh, in the back is Lisa Hayes, our videographer, who uses she, hers pronouns. And still absent, and I'm sure that Joni still has the picture, is Jared Dashoff, my logistics liaison, and I think as of last night, an official hero award winner, because he saved my butt, uh, and uses he, him pronouns. Um, there is, I think, still Wi-Fi in the room. What? I, I don't know how it's getting to him, but. Uh, so in the back, we have the information about the Wi-Fi. Um, we do not have coffee and tea today. That is your punishment for making us go to Monday. Um, and with all of that, we are going to head and get going, and I'm going to recognize Dave McCarty at the podium. Also, silence your noise-making devices. I am Dave McCarty, a uh, mixed chairperson. I would like to m make a point of order and I think request a ruling from the chair in hopefully a better way than, we tr than it was tried to do yesterday. Um, we have in the rules the ability for people to bring things to the meeting as long as there's copies for everybody, the point of which is to bring business. There were two handouts that have been in this room, neither one of which proposed new business or an amendment to current business. They were purely debate on the items on the floor, and we have time set for debate. And they were able to effectively bring debate into the room and not consume any of their time, which was voluminous in some cases. Uh, and that seems a bit unfair, and I think that we should try to play on the same field for everybody, so I would request a ruling on this from the chair. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I'm going to preemptively, because there is a point of order that I can sense coming, which is that point of orders have to be made in a timely manner. However, um, there is also a rule that if something is a continued breach, the point of order is, al is always in order. And due to the nature of printed and distributed materials, um, I am considering this, this point of order to be in order and not untimely. Um, so I'm, I'm prepared to make a ruling. I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, and I want to make my reasoning very clear um, so that it can be in the record. Um, I've had a lot of people, th this has been brought up to me multiple times by multiple people and a lot of good points have been made, uh, but I can't rule on philosophy. I have to rule on parliamentary procedure. There is nothing in RONR, in our standing rules, continuing resolutions or constitutions that, or constitution that explicitly disallows handouts of any kind. Um, because of that, I next looked to see whether or not there was anything that explicitly classified handouts as debate and then told me how to deal with that. Um, there is nothing in RONR, in our standing rules, in our continuing resolutions, or in our constitution that classifies handouts as debate. And so at that point, I looked to see if, given what debate is, the handouts qualify. And while the handouts qualify uh, philosophically as debate, procedurally they do not. Um, debate is a very specific thing. If you look at um, rules around limiting debate and when debate is in order, in RONR, it is very clear that debate is not just discussion on the motion, but it is the thing that happens when the chair recognize you and recognizes you and you come and speak the microphone. Otherwise, live tweets and side conversations would also be debate, and we would have to figure out how to deal with that. Um, and so because of that reasoning, I am ruling that um, 
with the state of our standing rules and continuing resolutions and constitution as it is, um, there is nothing disallowing the handouts and nothing that makes them debate and therefore subject to the rules governing debate and therefore the handouts, um, I mean, I can't even really govern them, but to the sense that I can, they were in order. And that is my ruling. Thank you. Yes, Ben Yallo. Uh, microphone. microphone. Um, point of information is this ruling planned is the committee charged with keeping track of rulings of significant nature and continuing effect planning on putting that ruling into the list of rulings of continuing effect I don't see why not. Um, my secretary says I don't see why not um, <laughs> that uh, Right, I, I would, um, yes, I would charge the committee with doing so. I think it is important to have this on the record and something that future chairs uh, can reference. Okay, that matter being Kate Secor. My name is Kate Secor, I use she, her pronouns. Um, parliamentary inquiry, uh, does the motion that was referred to the nitpicking and flyspecking committee yesterday conflict with this ruling, and if so, how does that get handled? Um, I believe that we have the ability to, um, the, the body has the ability to change the rules, and so uh, if the body wishes to change the rules, then it can do so. Uh, so no, I don't believe it conflicts because if it were to pass, it would essentially change what the ruling would be. Um, I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, is Cliff done? I understand that this is fiddly and wonky, but I strongly believed it need to be made part of the record. There. Mixed chair, uh, Cliff Dunn, he, him pronouns. Mixed chair, I believe your ruling is in fact completely correct. In order to load it into the record, however, I move to appeal the decision of the chair, noting that I intend to vote to sustain. Is there a second? Okay, the motion to appeal the ruling of the chair has been moved and seconded. Um, I am going to uh, forfeit my right to um, explain my ruling because I've already done so and I don't really have anything to add. Um, uh, the chair proposes uh, four minutes of debate. Any objection to four minutes? Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the ruling of the chair? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the ruling of the chair? I'll recognize Dave Wallace. Yes, Dave, Dave Wallace, uh, he, him pronouns, and as one of the authors of one of the two handouts here, I just wanted to note uh, for the record that I got myself a Twitter account and responded to Kiara Katz tweet last night um, about this question of whether this should count as debate and left my opinion there. I just wanted to point out two things I, I, I mentioned at the end of that after giving the timeline of how this all happened, and that is that the proponents of a motion have opportunity to put stuff in the record at the business meeting expense, you know, the arguments in favor, and th that certainly doesn't count against their debate. And again, I don't think that the, um, you know, I think that it's appropriate for, peop for people to request that whoever puts stuff out, you know, privately identifies themselves, and I, I did so, um, so that people know who's responsible and can come and, and talk to me about it or whatever. Um, so uh, th those are two things, but uh, again, I think the ruling of the chair is completely correct here. Thank you, that was a speech in favor. Um, is there a speech against the ruling of the chair? Uh, how are we doing on time? One minute. All right, uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak? You have to wait until I finish asking, Joe. 
Is there anyone else willing to speak uh, in favor of the ruling of the chair? I'll recognize Joe Van. Uh, I, up at the podium. Jill Van Ekren, my pronouns are she and her, is the author of the other handout that was presented at the business meeting this weekend. I'd like to address the fact that the business meeting agenda contains all the new proposals and it also contains extensive commentary in support of those proposals. It privileges the people making the proposals. It does not equally privilege the people who oppose those pro proposals. They do not have the opportunity to offer their side and have it included in the agenda or in any official WISFAS publication. The motion uh, opposing the chairman's ruling, therefore, tries to deprivilege further the people who are already not being privileged by being able to present their meeting in a their arguments in an official capacity. We don't count the agenda arguments as part of debate. We shouldn't count handouts as part of debate. Thank you. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, we are out of time for speeches in favor of the ruling of the chair. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Uh, those uh, who would sustain the ruling of the chair, please raise the hand. Thank you. And those who would not sustain the ruling of the chair, please raise the hand. And unanimously, the chair's ruling is sustained. Thank you. Uh, there was one more announcement I had to make that I forgot to make, which is that I have to leave at 11 because I have a flight. Uh, if I have to leave, I will obviously turn things over to Kevin. Uh, but just FYI, because I kind of want to finish this thing. So. <laughs> Um, okay, we are going to move on to D9. Yes? No. No. No, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong page. You're right. Yeah, D9 and sorry, 10 is right. what we have today. You got it. Um, uh, item D9, short titled Non Transferability of Voting Rights. It can be found on page 11 of your agenda. We have set 10 minutes of debate for this item. Would Kate Secor or Ben Yallo wish to come to the podium to speak to it? One moment. Okay. Ben Yallo, he, him. There's a lot of technical uh, wording in this thing just to deal with all of these crazy edge cases and things like that. I'm going to ignore all the technical wording if people want to quibble about the technical wording. I suspect that it could be fixed, but I don't see any issues with it. What it says is that essentially your WISFIS rights, once they are assigned to a specific person, are not transferable, but that the right to attend the Worldcon is completely transferable. Philosophically, this is the equivalent of you join a professional society, American Physical Society, the ALA, whatever it is, you join that society and you become a member of that society because you support the activities of that society or because it's your profession or whatever. Sometimes you get to go to the annual meeting of that society. For us, the society is WISFUS, the annual meeting is the Worldcon. You join the society for real as part of your annual dues, and you're a member of that society no matter what. And your WISFIS rights, Yugo's you goes, site selection, and in current cases, the Yugo packet, stay with you no matter what. But we don't want people to be stuck with, oh, I bought an attending membership, now what do I do? Because I can't make it. Well, the I can't make it is an argument for why the right to attend our meeting should be fully transferable, because that's 
not a philosophical question, that's can I afford it? Or do I have the vacation time? So what this does is it separates out the right to attend this Worldcon from the right to exercise your WISFIS rights and duties. Now, we've always sort of allowed transfers, except for the fact that we never know quite what it is that we're transferring. For example, at this convention, if you vote in Yugos and site selection and then transfer your WISFIS rights, well, the first vote you cast for site selection is the one that's going to count. Um, but if you then transfer your Yugo votes, the new guy who got your membership will be able to override your votes. And just to further confuse it, both of you can download the Yugo packet. Other conventions where they're using different software, they get different results. So you never know what the results are going to be of a transfer because it depends on how conventions implement their registration and so other software. So this says, administratively, it's really easy. You can't transfer those rights. But we're not locking you into the cost of attending the Worldcon. That you can transfer to anybody else. So it is both philosophically and administratively much clearer and much simpler and I believe much more just than the existing system. Thank you. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Uh, oh, I believe they're asking if member will yield for a question. Um, do I have time to do so? Uh, yeah, you've got like a minute 15. Um, okay, yeah, could you really yield mic to the gentleman in the back if you're yielding? I will yield, uh, make it fast. I've only got a minute 15 left. Um, right, sorry, Ray Richards, he, him. The question is about how this could potentially, or in the commentary text, you refer to the Hugo and site selection ballots. I'm thinking of attendance at this business meeting and how that could be impacted. Could you expand on that a little? The right to attend the business meeting has always been very, very unclear in the Constitution. I believe that, for example, people who have day memberships, which are day attendings, they are not day memberships, can, because they're allowed into the building, wander into here. Technically, I believe that the head table, when taking account, is required to ensure that only members are voting. But I know that we've never done that in the past, but technically I believe it is required, but we sort of pass on that part. Uh, did you also wish to, do you want to yield again? There's 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Make it fast. Alexis Slayton, he, him. Um, a transferred attending supplement would not have a, would, would, would a person be required to purchase a supporting membership in order to attend as well? Yes. No, 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 no. Yes, but supporting memberships can always be bought. You're not close enough to the Sorry. Uh, yes, supporting memberships can always be bought and then it gets tra the attending that's onto the new supplement. Okay, thank you. That was a speech in favor. I believe we are now out of time for speeches in favor. Is there a speech against? Uh, I will recognize Rick Kowalczyk at the podium. Rick Kowalczyk, he, he, him. This has not been an insurmountable problem in the past. And I think this actually raises more questions like, can people attend the business meeting and vote in the business meeting? It also means that anyone wishing to buy a, a transferred membership would either first need to buy a supporting membership or something like that and wind up paying two different people. 
And then what do you do if they buy the attending supplement but not the supporting membership? And it, I think it actually makes it much harder to transfer uh, memberships. And I think this is uh, trying to solve a problem that we really don't need to solve. And I, therefore, I'm not in favor of it. Thank you. Sorry, the tie beat of the applause was interesting. Uh, we are out of time for speeches in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Uh, I will recognize Donald Eastlake at the podium. Uh, Donald Eastlake, he, him. I just wanted to point out one particular thing. In the well, section 1.5.5, it strikes out difference between site selection fee and uh, and the, price, uh, and the price of any membership or supplement. Uh, that was specifically added to, so that a world science fiction convention could not make it more expensive for voters to be attending than for people who joined as attending after the voting. And I don't see any reason why that should be taken out because I, I think that voters should uh, not be uh, penalized, but if anything should be rewarded. Uh, well, Mr. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sure, I will. Will you for a question? Or maybe I misunderstood something. Yes, I believe. Yeah, if one of the roving mics can make it too. Great. Okay. Red mic. Red mic. Um, I carefully we strike out the difference between the site selection fee wording, and that is in fact the cost of the attending upgrade, and we replace it with the price of an attending supplement. So therefore, that restriction is still fully in place. OK. OK, that was a speech against. We are still out of time for speeches in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Um, I recognize you up at the podium. Karina Stark, she, her. Um, it seems very unclear whether or not a supporting membership is required to have an attending supplement, and I foresee that causing a great deal of confusion. I would prefer if this motion would include such language, and yeah, I, I think that that would be a lot more clear and that we could then vote on it accordingly, and that would include things like attendance to the business meeting, um, whether or not somebody with only an attending um, uh, supplement would then be able to uh, vote in site selection, et cetera. Thank you, that was a speech against. Uh, we are out of time for speeches in favor. Joni, are you wishing to make a point of order or parliamentary inquiry? I would like to move to amend. Okay, uh, a motion to amend has the same preference as uh, debate, so you will need to wait to stand to be recognized when everybody else does. Um, okay, I thought you were saying that, you have, that earlier you had ruled that you like this. To, to be clear, um, motions to amend, they have the same preference as debate. I believe the point, the, the time you were speaking of, I had asked if there was a speech in favor, and um, a member rose shortly before I started asking if there was a speech against, and so I considered that to be rising in the time for the speeches in favor, and so called on the member then. Um, you can make a motion to amend by standing for either category, but you do need to wait until um, everyone has the chance to be recognized so that um, <laughs> people are not jumping the gun and therefore getting preference. Um, I hope that's clear. Uh, so we just had a speech against. Uh, we are out of time for speeches in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? And I will recognize Joni at the podium. I would like to <coughs> Joni Brill, Dashoff, she, et cetera. I would like to move to amend this attending supplement to upgrade to attending. Maybe that would be more clear to what the difference is between sup um, supporting and associate rights of voting versus physically being present at the convention. Okay, so I understand your amendment to be that wherever um, the uh, 
the new text says amending supplement that it would be changed to um, upgraded to attending? Correct. Okay, is there a second? Okay, the uh, amendment fine. has been moved and seconded. Uh, do you wish to speak to it any further, Joni? I think I already said everything. Okay. How are we doing on time? Uh, two and a half minutes. Okay, between the two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've had a speech in favor of the amendment. Uh, is there a speech against? Uh, I recognize Dave McCarty. Dave, Dave McCarty, mixed chairperson. I believe this counts as speech against. I make a motion to refer to committee. Okay. Uh, yeah, which committee? A, a, a new one with Ben Yalo, me, and Kate Secor. Okay. Uh, assuming they're, assuming they're right. Sorry. Uh, a, a new committee with Ben Yalo, Kate Secor, and me, and anybody else that's interested, positive or negative, assuming that the other people I named are willing. Do you want me to pick a chair or do you want to pick a chair? I'd rather you pick a chair, and I'd rather it be not me. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so the member has moved to refer the amendment and the um, underlying motion to committee to be comprised of Dave McCarty, Ben Yallo, Kate Secor, and anyone else. PRK? Yes. Sorry, is a motion to refer to committee in order when there is a seconded motion to amend on the floor? Yes. Thank you. Um, so the committee would be comprised of Kate Seeker, Ben Yallo, Dave McCarty, and anyone else who uh, wishes to be a part of it. Uh, Dave doesn't want a chair. Kate's already chairing a thing. Ben, how do you feel? Sure. Okay, <laughs> to be chaired by Ben Yallo. Uh, I have heard a second. Um, do you wish to speak to your uh, motion to commit any further? I, I think it speaks for itself enough for me. Okay. Uh, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Uh, Lisa Hayes at the podium. Um, Lisa Hayes, she, her. I'm in favor of the motion, and if I'm wrong on what I'm about to say, yell at me. I would like not only the committee to address this, but to create some sort of uh, legible chart to show how it organizes so anybody who's not too bright can follow what's going on. Okay, thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Rick Kowalczyk. <coughs> This is horrible. You're never going to be able to fix it. You're never going to make it idiot proof. Let's kill it now. I believe that was Rick Kowalczyk. Yep. Hey, that was a speech against the motion to refer. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, I'll recognize Joshua. How are we on time? Um, I mean, not that much time has been used. It's like a minute. Okay. I'm so bad at telling how much time has passed. Um, Joshua Quinn, all my pronouns are he and him. Um, I move to a uh, closed debate on this question and all pr um, questions and, and um, all everything pending. in the stack. All pending, yeah. all pending questions, yeah. Yep. All, thank you. All pending what? It, all pending questions. We yes. understand what you mean. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I, well, the chair will phrase it. Okay. The previous question has been called on all that is before us. To be clear, that is the motion to refer the amendment and the underlying motion. Um, is there uh, any objections to closing debate? Okay. Uh, hearing an objection, we will move to a vote on whether to close debate. This requires a two-thirds vote. Those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion to close debate passes. Uh, so we're going to have as many, as few as one, and as many as three votes in quick succession here. The first vote is on the motion to refer the amendment and the underlying motion to a committee uh, to be chaired by Ben Yallo, comprised of him, Kate Secor, Dave McCarty, and anyone else 
uh, who uh, is invited to participate. Uh, those in favor of the motion to refer, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion is referred to committee. And we don't have to do the other two votes. Okie doke. Yep. Okay, we are now. Yes. Um, I'll recognize Ben Yallo at the microphone. I will stick around after the meeting. If anybody wants to be on the committee, please come up to me and let me know. And if you can't get a hold of me before then, send information off to the business meeting and since they have my personal email, which I do not want to put into the minutes because that'll go worldwide. Yeah. I'm not putting, I wouldn't put that into the minutes. Thank you. Okay, we are now on item D10, short title, Preserving Supporting Membership Sales for Site Selection. It is on page 12 of your agenda and we have allotted four minutes for this. Um, is, yep. okay, yeah. yep, I organized the clip done at the podium. Cliff Dunn, he, him pronouns. Uh, Mixed chair, just to make it very brief. brief. When Dublin cut off uh, membership sales, we realized, you know, that there was a potential that in the wonderful tradition of playing games of telephone, a future Worldcon committee could decide to both cut off attending and supporting membership sales, or membership and attending supplement sales, as it were. And this could potentially complicate site selection in particular if they were to disallow supporting membership sales for hand-carried ballots. This hasn't been an issue in the past, but the, Dublin was also, I believe, the first Worldcon to ever cut off attending membership sales in advance of the convention. And just with things evolving as they are, we figured that loading this in would be a smart move. Okay, that is a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I'll recognize Kent Bloon. Mixed chairperson, uh, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I think we're getting a little over specific here. The traditions and the ballot format that's passed along uh, have always allowed for this, uh, and I think we should at least consider that this is awfully nitpicky for a constitution. Um, I don't think w we need to tell site selection administrators how to do their business, and I don't think we need to tell Worldcon conventions anything more than we absolutely have to about how they should do their business. When Dublin and made this announcement, there was an immediate and uh, vociferous outcry, uh, which they immediately responded to by saying, oh, we didn't mean it that way. Uh, I believe that would happen any time that, if, that, that a Worldcon does something uh, which we don't approve of, um, and I don't think it's necessary to put this in the Constitution. Thank you. That was a speech against. Is there anyone, excuse me, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Kate, did you have a point of order, or were you just jumping no, the gun? Just today. Too much coffee, so. Okay, I will recognize Todd Dashoff at the microphone. Uh, point of order? Yes. Uh, I believe there's only only one maker of the motion is allowed to have preference. Uh, if Todd speaks really quickly. 